Alrighty, welcome everyone to the Virtual College Exploration Program in partnership with Colleges That Change Lives. This is the Goucher College Information Session, but before I pass it over to our uh, presenter, Megan, I'm going to kick us off with some housekeeping items in case this is the first session you've attended through CTCL. Uh, we do have a few more sessions tonight, uh, so feel free to check out our schedule. We have one more after this, um, St. Mary's, uh, St. Mary's College of California. Um, as you register for these sessions, you do get a uh, confirmation code in, or bar, a barcode in that confirmation email, but know that that barcode is not necessary for any of the virtual events that you participate in. Um, all of our recordings will be available on our website shortly, so each session is recorded. So whether you want to rewatch it or watch one you may have missed, just check back on our website for that, um, for that specific recording. And then finally, you will notice that you will see in here, Megan, unfortunately, she cannot see or hear you all. This is webinar style format. So any questions you have throughout the presentation, feel free to type those into the Q&A box um, and the presenter will do her best to address those. And we also have someone behind the scenes kind of addressing those questions as well. So without further ado, Megan, I will pass it on to you. Thanks. Perfect. Oh, oh no. Sorry, my PowerPoint disappeared. Okay, so welcome everyone to this virtual information session for Goucher College. Um, my name is Megan Steely, one of the admissions counselors. There we go. Um, and I personally work with all students who go to school in New York City, New Jersey, Texas, Oklahoma, um, as well as any of our international students. So if you are from any of those places, hello, I'm your admissions counselor. Um, if not, we can, you can find all of our um, counselor assignments on our website, as well, along with all of our contact information as well. So feel free to reach out to us there. Um, as mentioned, we do um, have another admissions counselor, Tiffany Charles, who's with us today, um, who will be manning all of the questions. So feel free to ask anything um, and we'll do our best to try and answer all of those. So really my goal for today is to give you an overview of Goucher um, and particularly sort of sh show off what sets us apart and makes us a little bit unique. Um, I'm sure you've spent a lot of your summer looking at college websites, maybe attending other virtual events. Um, and particularly if you were looking at a lot of other small liberal arts schools like Goucher, um, I'm sure a lot of those schools have sort of started to blend together, um, particularly if you are attending some of these other CTCL programs. Um, so my goal is to really kind of showcase what makes Goucher, Goucher. Um, and starting off with our location. Um, so we are located about 20 minutes north of the Inner Harbor of Baltimore um, in a college town. Um, but looking sort of at the greater Eastern Seaboard, um, we are about an hour from Washington, DC, about an hour and a half to Philadelphia, and about two and a half to three hours from New York City. So we have one of sort of the rare distinctions of being a liberal arts college that is not in the middle of nowhere. Um, so particularly looking at where we are within Baltimore um, and within Towson, which is the suburb that we are located in, um, we actually share Towson with a larger state university. So there's you know, plenty to do right there. Um, there's a mall and shopping centers and local shops and restaurants. Um, but then looking at Baltimore itself, um, you know, it's a major metropolitan area. So students are able to explore that um, recreationally, but also have internship opportunities there as well. Um, but Baltimore also is home to 14 colleges and universities. So there are plenty of other college age students in the area. Um, and this also allows for a lot of cross collaboration and even cross registration. Um, and we do also have the College Town Shuttle, which is a free shuttle for students. So it enables students to get around the Baltimore area. Um, so specifically, Goucher, we are situated on a 287-acre campus. Um, it's very green, very beautiful um, at all times of the year, um, and we are a liberal arts institution. 
Um, so we have about 1,400 undergraduate students um, and roughly 700 graduate students, primarily through online programs. Um, so we very much have small classes. Our average class size is about 15 students. Um, we have a 10 to 1 student faculty ratio, which means that you absolutely get to know your fellow classmates and your professors. Um, professors know you outside the classroom as well. Many of them actually go by their first name. So you really are building relationships um, with the people on campus. Um, Doucher is also a very diverse community in a lot of different ways. Um, so we have students, about 40% of our students are coming from Maryland, um, but we are represented by about 45 states and over 30 different countries. California is actually the fifth highest represented state on campus. Um, about 40% of our students are students of color. Um, about 40% are members of the LGBTQIA community. Uh, about 28% are student athletes and about 28% um, are first generation students. So the first in their family to attend college. Um, so I always like to say that there is not a you know, cookie cutter Goucher student. Um, everyone has had a different experience uh, prior to coming to Goucher. And so really there is an opportunity to learn from each other and, you know, work with students who have had different backgrounds, um, which is, you know, always a great skill to learn um, in this ever-changing world. So I'm going to spend the bulk of my time tonight um, talking about academics. You know, hopefully one of the main reasons why you are looking at a college is for that academic factor. Um, and so the way that we really can focus on academics at Goucher um, is sort of summarized within this slide. So it's a combination of the Goucher Commons curriculum, um, focus on experiential learning through internship and research opportunities, study abroad, um, and community-based learning, and then also a focus on career education. And so Goucher really has done something unique in the fact that we have moved away from the standard checkbox system of gen ed or distribution requirements, where, you know, regardless of your major or your chosen field of study, um, during your first year or two on campus, there are specific courses that you need to sort of check off um, in order to meet these distribution requirements and become well rounded. Um, and so, you know, you're looking at these classes sort of on their own, in their own little bubble, um, not necessarily relating to anything that you are interested in or planning on studying. And so Goucher has done away with that. Um, and instead, we have created a series of seminar courses. And so this begins with the first year seminar in the first semester of your first year. Um, and so this really is serving a few purposes. So it serves as an introduction to college course, right? So it's looking at, it's a seminar course um, where you're sort of understanding the, um, you know, expectations within a college class. Um, but then it's also really sort of trying to reinstill that love of learning that has so often sort of disappeared when you've been focusing um, throughout your high school years on really kind of preparing yourself for a test, whether it be an AP exam or a state test or an IB exam or something like that, um, where you know you really have to get through a certain set of uh, material and then that's it. There is not really any additional time to explore. And so we really want to make sure that you are loving learning once again. Um, and so with this, we have about 25 different first year seminar options. You will actually rank your choices for these and we will do our absolute best to give you that first choice. Um, but so in doing that, we are hoping that it is a topic that you really are passionate about. Um, so to throw out some examples, and we have a course called Where the Wild Things Are that looks at the history of wilderness and um, humans relationship to nature. Um, there's a course called uh, Secret Life of Puppets that looks at how puppets function as an art form. Um, and you know, there's a course on censorship and journalism, a course called Genomes for Jocks and Docs that looks to see if there's a you know, chemical difference in athletes versus non-athletes. So there are these really you know, specific topics that you are working on delving very deeply into and honing in on your critical thinking skills um, and your complex problem solving skills. And that jumps into the following seminars that you'll take, which are known as the Complex Problem Exploration Courses or CPEs. 
And so you will take two of these. And so with this, with these courses, you are looking at one topic from a variety of subject areas. So for instance, we have a course um, called Nations, Borders, and Immigration. So a lot of colleges have a course like this that would fall under political science or international relations or something like that. And while we absolutely cover those topics in that course, we actually start that class looking at history. So seeing why borders exist and how long they have existed and where they've shifted, um, then you are following you know, political science and international relations looking at you know, immigration policies, but Immigration is a very human issue. So you're looking at you know, sociology and anthropology. You're looking at economics to see what economic reasons you know, make people immigrant. You're looking at environmental issues as well. So you're having the exposure to these different subject areas in just one class. Um, and once again, really looking at solving these complex problems. Um, and what I think is really special about a class like this is that you have students from all different majors um, and you know, areas of study. So you, know, you have people who will lead the discussion when you're talking about economics or anthropology or international relations. Um, but you not being one of those majors, you can still learn from them and have the exposure to those subject areas. Um, we have a course called Disease and Discrimination that looks at AIDS and diabetes from both a biological and a sociological standpoint. So you're understanding how these diseases affect the body and their chemical makeup, but then you're also looking at it from a sociological perspective, seeing you know, what biases exist surrounding people with these diseases, how government intervention has differed, or you know, funding for research. Um, pretty timely topic given today's world. Um, and so once again, you're seeing you know, these different subject areas and really kind of discovering what topics are interesting to you and what topics you know, are maybe not as interesting, um, but you're still getting that exposure. So this is a great way also for students who are coming in undecided um, to see you know, what certain subjects are all about. Um, so this really is sort of the basis of our academics. And then in addition to those seminar courses, we do also have three areas of proficiency that we ask students to meet. Um, and so that is in data analytics, writing, and foreign language and culture. So data analytics is our version of math. We are of the mindset that you do not necessarily need to take calculus in college, um, but you do need to be familiar with statistics and data analysis. Um, so this is actually a two-part series. So you would take one general course um, that introduces everyone to statistics um, and data analysis and understanding you know, how data functions. Um, and then you're taking a course specific to your major. So you're understanding specifically how you utilize data in what you were studying. And then in a similar way, our writing requirement is two courses. So the first is a general course um, to get everyone to that same kind of college level writing standard. And then the second course is specific to your major. So we are really focusing in on giving you the general tools in data analysis and writing and then also the specific tools. Um, so, you know, preparing yourself for what you are studying and hopefully going off um, to do in the career field. And then with that foreign language and culture requirement, um, we offer French, Spanish, and Arabic on campus. Um, most students, depending on where they place with the placement test, will end up taking two courses. Um, but because we have that cross-registration within the College Town Network, you do have the option to take other foreign languages um, that are not offered on campus. So if there's a language that you're currently taking or something that you've always wanted to take, you do have that option available to you. Um, and it's also not just looking at the language itself, there is also a cultural element to it as well. Um, and then we do also have two institutional commitments, um, one being in race, power, and perspective, and the other in environmental sustainability. And now these are not specific classes that you will take. Um, these are themes that you will encounter really throughout your entire time at Goucher. So whether in uh, your first year seminar in your major classes. Um, our first year read usually encompasses the race, power, and perspective theme. Um, so it really 
is sort of these two themes of social justice um, that Goucher is committed to making sure that all of our students have that exposure to. Um, I've talked a little bit about majors in the past, um, but here they are all listed for you. Um, don't worry, they are on our website. Um, Goucher offers over 25 different majors. Um, we have students who are interested in all sorts of combinations. Students have the opportunity to double major or minor. Um, students even have the ability to create their own major as well. Uh, most popular majors tend to be psychology, biology, international relations, creative writing, um, but really any combination that you can think of probably has happened at some point. Um, we then also do offer some standalone minors and concentrations, um, including our pre-med concentration and secondary education. Um, and then we also have some exciting new majors as well. And so what's really great about these is that they are often interdisciplinary in their approach, but more than anything, they're focused on sort of this ever-changing world, right? There are so many jobs that don't exist yet, but will be the jobs that you actually end up working in. Um, so we're making sure that our students have these tools available to them. Um, and just an example of sort of the interdisciplinary approach, our visual and material culture program is a combination of art history and museum studies and historic preservation. So not only looking at art, um, but also you know, clothing and books and things like that to see what they can tell us. Um, we you know, obviously spend a lot of time focusing on classroom learning, but we also recognize that learning happens outside the classroom. Um, and it's really important to sort of go out and experience um, and sort of get your hands dirty. And so one of the main reasons, or one of the main ways that this happens is through internships. So we don't require that all students have an internship, um, although certain majors do require that. Um, but we strongly, strongly encourage you to have an internship if at all possible. Um, you know, I think it's, you know, obviously a great way to, to have experience in a career that you know you are interested in. But I think an even more important reason to have an internship is to discover if a career that you think you are interested in is something that you actually want to spend time doing and want to make your career. Um, this happened in my own life. I was a history major in college. I always knew I wanted to major in history, thought I maybe wanted to work in a museum. So I had an internship at the Historical Society in my college town. I was doing a really great project, but um, it was me and the director of the Historical Society sitting in a dark back room. And so it was in that semester that I realized that I really needed a career that involved interacting with people. Um, luckily, I was also interning in our admissions office and giving tours on campus. And so that led into me um, being an admissions counselor. So it really is about you know, testing the waters and seeing what is available to you. Um, students have internships on campus in the Baltimore area. Um, and then also over the summer, back home in a different location abroad even um, so you know really kind of getting out there and seeing what different careers are possible um, another way that we focus on experiential learning is through research so because we have that small student faculty ratio because you have these relationships with professors and also because we are primarily an undergraduate institution the professors you're the professor's focus so this means that you have the opportunity to help them with their research, to start research of your own that they are serving as a mentor for. Um, and this is really possible in just about any department. Um, two of our more sort of robust programs for uh, research are through our summer science research program. So students are actually living on campus um, throughout the summer and working in the labs five days a week um, doing their own research and then they are actually presenting their work at a conference. Um, students are actually able to do this as early as the summer after their first year. So that's a really great opportunity um, for students in the sciences. And then we also have the Summer Writing Fellowship through our Pratt Center for Creative Writing. And so this is a stipend that allows students to travel or conduct research or purchase materials, anything to really um, you know, flesh out their creative writing. Um, so it really allows them to kind of experience something that they wouldn't have previously. 
So now getting into probably one of my favorite things about Goucher and one of the things that we are probably most known for, um, our study abroad requirement. So we were the first school in the country to require that all students study abroad before graduation in 2006. And today we are one of only a couple of colleges that require that. And yes, it is studying abroad. Um, you know, a semester in DC or LA does not count. Um, so students are able to fulfill that through either a semester long program or through a intensive course abroad, which is a three week program. So we send students just about everywhere in the world. We joke that you can go anywhere except Canada, Mexico, North Korea, and Antarctica. Um, if you are doing a semester abroad, you are enrolling directly into that international university um, and living on campus or in um, an apartment close by the campus or even in a homestay. Um, these are all partner programs, so we know that your credits will transfer, so you don't need to worry about you know, taking classes and not getting credit for that. Um, and then also, with as far as tuition goes, your scholarships and financial aid travel with you for these semester programs, so you will not pay more in tuition um, than you would at Goucher. The three-week courses, um, the ICAs, are led by Goucher faculty and are all Goucher students. So they, for the most part, go abroad during the summer, but occasionally during winter break. And those courses tend to be um, thematic or interdisciplinary. So for instance, there's a course in Costa Rica um, that's is Spanish and environmental studies. Um, there's a course that goes to Ghana for dance. Um, there's a course in South Africa for um, social justice and leadership, a course in Japan and Taiwan focusing on education and history. Um, and you know, in choosing your program and where you're going abroad, we want you to push yourself as far outside your comfort zone as you can stand. Um, and we recognize that you know, this looks different for everyone. People have been traveling internationally their whole lives and others have never been on a plane before. Um, so we really want you to kind of go to that edge of the comfort zone. Um, and you know, I think the fact that this is a requirement for all students, that 100% of students are doing this, uh, really changes the conversations that are happening both on and off campus and in and outside the classroom. Um, so, you know, students are definitely taking what they've learned and what they've experienced and bringing it back to Goucher. Um, so, like I said, this is one of my favorite things about our college. Um, and then next we have our um, community-based learning opportunities. So this, in the easiest sense, is um, volunteerism, um, but it's much more than that. So at Goucher, we have moved away from sort of this one and done model when it comes to um, volunteer work or community service. And so instead, we are really focused on developing and fostering relationships with our community partners. Um, so you know, encouraging students to make a commitment um, of either a semester, a year, maybe even all four years um, to really, you know, take part in these organizations, um, but also, you know, reflect on your experiences and looking at, you know, the issues of social justice and reflecting upon your own biases. Um, some courses actually will have a CBL component to them, and then other times students are um, taking part in these organizations just on their own. Um, and we really do have programs for everyone. So everything from um, education, animal welfare, environmental issues, um, food insecurity or housing injustice. Um, so you know, whatever you're looking for, there's a way to get connected um, and you know, become a part of sort of the greater Baltimore community. Um, and then I also mentioned a focus on career education. So every college, um, has a career education office of some sort. Um, but what often happens in those cases is that students do not utilize these offices until there's sort of this panicked moment in the spring of their senior year, um, where suddenly they're realizing that they you know, don't have a resume or they don't know how to find a job or an internship or something like that. And so in order to avoid that, um, we have sort of flipped that model on its head and started integrating career education into the first year. So by the end of that first year, you'll have a resume and a cover letter. Um, you'll know how to find an internship, 
but then you'll also look at sort of self-knowledge and personal branding. So understanding, you know, where your skills lie and what's important to you when it comes to having a career. Um, they then also offer, you know, networking through our alumni network and also, um, you know, organizations and um, jobs in the Baltimore area. Um, they'll do resume boot camps, uh, mock interviews, there's a professional wardrobe, anything like that. Um, so really making sure that when it comes time for you to um, you know, apply for that internship, apply for that job upon graduation, you really are as prepared as possible and know what you are doing and what you are looking for. Um, and then, you know, we want students to be as successful as possible during their time at Goucher um, from an academic standpoint, especially. And so there are plenty of student-centered resources that are available to students. Um, so the first being Navigate, which is um, an app that has all your grades, but then is also how you can um, schedule appointments with professors or other offices on campus. All students have an academic advisor. Um, students are assigned to one of three first year advisors um, before their time at Goucher. So they not only help you schedule your first semester classes, but will also check in with you and see how your classes are going, what you're liking, what you're not liking, um, if you're sort of leaning towards any major, um, and you know, making sure that you know what's expected of those majors and what classes you need to take. Um, we do also have a um, pre-med advisor as well. And then once students declare their major, then they are given a faculty advisor within that department. Um, and then we also have ACE, which is the um, Academic Center for Excellence, where all of our tutoring takes place, as well as, um, you know, study skills and note-taking skills and things like that, um, as well as our Quantitative Reasoning Center and our Writing Center for math and writing help. Um, so a lot of great resources that we really encourage students to take advantage of. So switching gears into student life, um, you know, while academics are important, an important part of college, we also recognize that there's a lot that happens outside the classroom. Um, Goucher is a residential campus. Housing is guaranteed all four years. Um, and we have really made um, some big strides in terms of um, honing in on our community. Um, and part of those were through some building, um, some new buildings that we've created. So the first being the first year village. So these are three residence halls that all surround the same courtyard where all of our first year students are living. And so, you know, they're very intentionally built to foster community among new students. There's a lounge on every floor, a kitchen on every floor, the staircases open up into the lounges, and then each building has a unique element to it as well. Um, so one has a demonstration kitchen, with, so it's a kitchen with a camera. You can do your best Food Network Chef impersonations. Um, another has our wellness center and a dance studio. Um, and then the last has a larger lounge with a large projection screen. So you can you know, stream movies or award shows or anything like that. And the major reason why we've done this is that we recognize that one of the biggest reasons or ways to be successful in college is to make friends and to find that community. Um, so the fact that everyone, um, every new student is living in this sort of one area of campus really aids in that. And then the other major building project that we did um, was centralizing our dining. Um, so our food is so fantastic. Um, we use a company called Bon Appetit. Um, that's really focused on uh, locally sourced ingredients and farm to table whenever possible. Um, but you know, particularly moving that dining hall to the heart of campus makes it a lot easier for students um, to you know, go to in between classes, but also to take their time and have a meal with their friends, with professors um, you know, at the end of the day. Um, a really great resource for our students as well um, is CREE, which is the Center for Race, Equity, and Identity. And so this serves all of our um, underrepresented students and marginalized students. Um, so our students of color, our first generation students, our LGBTQ students, our international students. Um, and so there are affinity spaces for these students. They'll have dinners and hold events. Um, um, but it's also a place for students to learn from one another um, and, you know, once again, kind of engage with people from different perspectives and different experiences. 
We also have so many clubs on campus, um, over 60 different clubs and student organizations. So everything from student government um, and acapella groups. We have a bad movie watching club, we have a beekeeping club. Um, we have something called Humans vs. Zombies um, that if you've heard of before, it did actually start at Goucher. Um, so you've Goucher students to thank for that. Um, it's a giant game of tag with Nerf guns that happens twice a year. And then in addition to those clubs, we also have um, student sponsored events um, from our student engagement team. So they'll have guest speakers, they have um, gala, which is a fall or a dance at the end of the fall semester. There's gig, which is a big spring carnival. So there's food trucks and mechanical bulls and DJs and tie dye and all of that. Um, and then we also have the Gopher Hole, which is a place for you know open mic nights and movie nights, and just a really great place for students to hang out in their downtime. Um, we do also offer Division Three athletics. Um, we are part of the Landmark Conference, um, and as I mentioned, about um, a third of our students are student athletes. So you can see the men's teams here, and then we have our women's teams as well. Um, Particularly of note, our tennis teams and our golf teams have been extremely successful as of late. Um, our soccer teams and lacrosse teams have also been very successful too. Um, and then in addition to those Division Three teams, we also have um, an IHSA equestrian team as well. And something that's a little bit different is that our stables are actually located right on campus. So even if you're not part of the team, you can go down to the stables and say hi to our horses and Cookie, our miniature pony. Um, so definitely not something that you see on every campus. And now touching a little bit on sort of the post-graduation side of things, um, what happens after Goucher, um, we are very happy to say that 96% of our graduates are um, pursuing further education or employment. And then to give you an idea um, of sort of where our students are going, um, here's an example, examples of our graduate schools. You can see in the country, but then also a fair amount of international universities as well. Um, and then as far as employment um, opportunities, once again, you see sort of these big names, Peace Corps opportunities, and then also what I think is great is a lot of nonprofit opportunities as well. Um, so Goucher students, even after graduation, um, really are focusing in on this idea of, um, you know, community service and uh, social justice. And then the last thing I want to mention um, is that at Goucher, we recognize that um, a college education is an investment and a big investment at that, um, which is why we were very happy to be ranked in the top 20% of all colleges nationwide um, in terms of lifetime investment on their education. So this means that what students are putting in, they're getting the most out of um, in terms of their salary. Um, so you can see here that 40 years post-graduation, um, Goucher graduates are making close to a million dollars. Um, so this is a great opportunity for students um, to really kind of make an investment in their future. And then lastly, just a few other kind of accolades and reasons why we are proud. Um, we, from the beginning, have been named one of the colleges that change lives. It's the reason why we're here today. Um, we were also named one of the most innovative colleges, a best national liberal arts college. Um, we have four out of five campus pride stars. We were a uh, top performer on social mobility. And then we were also ranked number one in study abroad. Um, so now it wasn't too long, um, but hopefully by now you have kind of an idea of what Goucher is all about. Um, and at this point, we will turn it over to the Q&A session of things. Okay, so let's see. Can you go back to grads to the grad school slide? Um, so you can actually find that information um, on our website. So it'll give you kind of a full list of that. Um, okay, and then we have a question from Andrew Jones. How has Gavinger addressed COVID-19 on campus? Yeah, great question. So um, like just about any um, college, we closed our campus and went fully online in March. Um, and then we spent the summer kind of planning for every possible scenario. Um, there was a um, task force dedicated to sort of 
making sure everything was put in place. We had hoped to be on campus in the fall, um, but have ultimately decided to um, go online for the fall. Um, so we're, you know, working with our students to make sure that they feel as connected and supported as possible um, with the hope that by spring semester, we'll be able to be back on campus. Um, okay, from Madeline, do students have to live on campus all four years? For the most part, yes. Um, we have a small population of students um, that are commuter students that are living in the local area. And then occasionally we allow students um, to live off campus um, in their senior year. Um, Question, are there any work study programs? Yes, so Goucher offers work study programs, which would be part of your um, financial aid package. So once you're admitted and you submit your FAFSA, which is the free application for federal student aid, um, you will see a work study award um, if you were given one. And so we have plenty of work study options, uh, opportunities on campus. Um, our admissions office has a lot of students. Um, you can work in the library, a lot of different offices on campus. Um, so that's definitely something that's available to students. Um, do you meet 100% of financial need? Um, we do not. Um, we do offer pretty sizable merit scholarships. So those are um, scholarships based off of your academic achievement throughout high school. Um, and then we do also offer a variety of um, need-based aid. Our average financial aid package is about $38,000 per year. Um, so while we don't meet full financial need, um, we do offer pretty sizable packages there. Um, the question, can you study abroad more than once? Yes, you can. Um, so there are some students that will um, combine two semester-long programs into a full year abroad um, in two different locations. Um, there are students that will do multiple three-week programs, those ICAs, students that will do um, an ICA and a semester-long program. Um, so it's definitely possible, um, but you just are required to study abroad once. Um, can non-majors participate in dance? Absolutely. Um, so while we have a dance major and a dance minor, um, anyone is able to participate in dance. So whether that is taking a dance class for credit um, or participating in some of our extracurricular dance programs. Um, you do not need to audition for the major, um, but you would just audition in terms of where you were placed in, in the level of the class. You know, if you've never taken ballet before, you're not going to be in a 400 level ballet class, uh, but you can definitely participate in dance regardless of your major. Um, can you mention again the percentage of students that are out of state and your top states? Yeah, so um, about 40% of students um, are in state, so about 60% are out of state. Um, so we have students from about 45 states and over 30 different countries. Um, the, besides Maryland, the other sort of highest represented states tend to be um, Pennsylvania, New York, New Jersey, and California. Um, would you please talk about music opportunities? Yeah, sure. So first of all, we actually just started um, a music minor, um, but we do also have opportunities for students um, to participate in acapella groups. Um, we have different ensembles, um, and so kind of depending on whether you're talking about like vocal or um, instrumental, um, there are definitely options there. And you can learn more about that on the website. Um, what year do students typically study abroad? Yeah, so if you are doing the full semester abroad, um, that would be either your spring semester of your sophomore year or either semester of your junior year. Um, if you are doing one of those three week courses, that can actually happen as early as the summer after your first year. Um, so you have some flexibility there, depending on, you know, what program you want to do, um, what major you're in, you know, maybe there's a specific class that you need to take your, you know, sub, uh, junior year fall, so you can't go abroad then. Um, if schools are giving pass fail grades and no test scores, does another part of the application take on a bigger role? The essays, the letter of recommendations? Yeah, great question. Um, so to start with, Goucher has been test optional since 2006. Um, so, you know, you do not need to worry about submitting your test scores. Um, this is not a new thing. Um, we've been doing it for, you know, over a decade at this point. Um, and Goucher does what's called a holistic review of the application. Um, so 
we're looking at that full picture. Um, so, you know, we understand with COVID-19 and with, you know, working and going to school online, that schools are doing things differently. Um, so we are really looking at what each individual school is doing. Um, but keep in mind too that, you know, we're not, we have other grades for you, right? Um, but, you know, we're looking at sort of the big picture. Um, so everything is important, um, but I, I'd say more, more than anything, it's kind of looking at the individual situation school by school. Um, is there a film program? So there's not a specific film program. We do have our communications and media studies program that has some film classes, um, but it's not a you know, full robust film program that we offer. Um, let's see, is there career counseling? Yeah, so um, that happens through our career education office. Um, so, you know, depending on what you're looking for, it can be just sort of general that students are, you know, working on their resumes and cover letters starting within the first year. Um, we have career communities, so there's sort of these bigger topic areas um, in terms of the job market that you can sort of explore those topics. Um, and then you can also, you know, talk to the career education office, make an appointment one on one. Um, they have, you know, internship fairs and job fairs. So, you know, ma really making sure that you feel prepared, um, you know, whether it's doing a mock interview or connecting with an alum or something like that. Um, Ooh, okay, if you could use three words to describe the Goucher student body, which words would you use? Uh, okay, so this is always hard. Um, I would say, um, maybe it, it won't be exactly three words, but um, I would say socially conscious, globally aware, um, and then maybe eclectic. Um, I think, you know, it's a really great bunch of students who all have kind of varied interests, but at the same time share these sort of common, um, you know, things that are important to them um, and common ideals. So um, it really is a place that people are supported. Um, it's a community. I know that wasn't three words, but it's, it's a hard question. Um, can you study multiple languages, for example, both French and Spanish? Yes, you, yes, you can. Um, you are just required to do one, um, like I said, generally through two classes. Um, but if you want to take more classes, you absolutely can do that. Um, are you assigned a roommate? So you do have that option to be sort of randomly paired with a roommate. Um, I, I guess randomly is not the right word. You go through a full um, sort of application process. Um, it's almost like a dating profile. So you're paired with someone that, you know, we think would be a good pair for you. Um, but then students do also have the opportunity to request a roommate as well. So if you, you know, meet someone at um, an event or something or through, you know, our Facebook group or something like that, you can um, connect with them and request to room with them that way. Um, do you offer Greek life and it is important to the student body? We do not have Greek life, um, so it is not important to the student body because it is not there. Um, how do you support first generation students? Yeah, so um, one of the ways is through CRE. Um, so as I said, that's the Center for Race, Equity, and Identity. Um, so there are affinity groups for our first-gen students. Um, we do also have a um, pre-orientation program as well that focuses on our first-gen students. Um, so <clears throat> giving you a mentor that really makes sure that, you know, you're getting acclimated to college and kind of understanding, you know, the ins and outs um, that being a first-gen student, student, excuse me, you might kind of have been missing. Um, so that's definitely a big way. Um, can, would you please talk about the Lavender program? Um, so, I mean, it's, it's not really a program. Once again, it falls under Cree. Um, and as I said, about 40% of our students are members of the LGBTQ community. Um, so, you know, it really kind of is more just a part of campus than, you know, a high school that might have an SGA or something like that. So it just kind of becomes part of the fabric of campus. So 
with that, it looks like we're kind of reaching the end of our time. So I want to thank you all for taking part in tonight's event. Um, as I said, you can always reach out to your admissions counselor or directly to me. Um, we'd be happy to answer anything that you might want to know about Goucher. Um, and we look forward to connecting with you once again um, through any of our other virtual events or you know, through a virtual high school visit or anything like that. Yeah. All righty, thank you so much, Megan, for sharing all that valuable knowledge. I know you guys got a lot of questions, so great job. <laughs> Um, thank you for those who attended and uh, as you exit the webinar, you will be taken to a quick survey. It's only four questions, so we'd love to hear your feedback regarding this particular session. And as I mentioned in the beginning, all of our sessions are recorded and will be posted to our website uh, by tomorrow. So I hope everyone has a great morning, afternoon, evening, wherever you may be. Uh, and thanks once again to Megan at Goucher. Have a great night. Thank you all.